Hello and welcome to Dr. Nora. In today's episode, I'm going to be answering all of your questions that I received from my last video on which masks to wear from, hey Dr. Nora, should I still be wearing a mask? Which mask should I use? And do handmade masks actually work? So stay tuned because you're about to get downloaded with a whole bunch of information. <laughs> First up, let's talk about some stats. Over here in Australia, this beautiful country where I'm currently practicing as a medical doctor, since coronavirus hit our shores in late January, we have tested no less than 1 million Australians nationwide. Now, that is a huge number of Australians. Of those 1 million people, we've had about a 0.7% positive rate. That means we've had around 7,000 positive cases of coronavirus. Unfortunately, there have been some deaths, but our numbers have actually remained quite low. Now, we're not entirely sure why Australia has done remarkably well compared to other countries. It could be that we locked down our borders relatively early. It could be because the government has imposed self-isolation and lockdown for all of its citizens. But one thing that we haven't been asked to do or formally been asked to do is to wear masks. Now, Australia is one of the countries that has not been formally obliged to wear masks. That means that we haven't all been told to run outside, get masks, wear them in the streets, unlike some other countries where wearing masks has become compulsory, such as the USA, such as Cuba, where actually if you don't wear a mask, you're actually fine a fee. And other countries such as Austria and other European countries as well, wearing masks has been obligatory. Now I personally, as you will recall from my previous vlogs, I personally have been a victim of being a healthcare professional, not being able to get my hands on one of the proper masks, which are the P2 masks or the N95 masks, because a lot of Australians went out as soon as coronavirus hit our shores and they went out to hardware shops, they went out to other shops that were selling these masks and it literally got sold out in an instance. But what are the actual recommendations for mask wearing worldwide? Right. Well, let's take a look at two different health organizations. The first up is the World Health Organization, who I'm sure you would all be familiar with that name now. So the World Health Organization recommends that healthcare professionals or people who are dealing with suspected cases of COVID-19 should be wearing these masks, which are these medical grade masks, which is the P2 mask or the N95 mask. It doesn't recommend that people who are well in the street wear such masks, and it doesn't actually recommend that you should be wearing handmade masks either. However, the CDC, who are another big organization have actually said that you should be wearing a mask or they do recommend wearing a mask. They say that they don't have any data to quantify the risks of not wearing a mask. And in fact, they actually recommend wearing a handmade mask or a cloth over your face in areas where social gatherings will not allow you to have social distancing. Hmm, that is really confusing. So what should I be doing and who should I be following? Should I be following the World Health Organization or should I be following the CDC? Where do I stand? Well, I'm about to tell you exactly what we should be doing and I'm gonna be giving you some stats and some figures and looking at studies that have analyzed the different types of masks that are available and what protection measures you can be doing as well. First up, let's talk about the cloth mask. Okay, over in America, Los Angeles, New York, they have had a large number of COVID-19 cases and my heart really goes out to them and my thoughts and prayers are with everybody who was affected. But we know that the governors have said that you should be wearing a cloth mask and whether that's just a simple tissue mask or a veil mask like my buddy here, Mr. Skullman is wearing. Although he probably actually doesn't really need to be wearing a mask, I'd say. Anyway, what we need to look at is with regards to these handmade masks, yes, they can offer some protection, I'll go into that in a moment, but we do know that the efficacy of those masks does vary and the reason for this is because, well, think about it, if you've got a scarf over your face and you're going out into the streets and someone's coughing on you and sneezing on you, then you take it off at home and you forget to wash it, then you've still got those bugs on your scarf. So you really need to make sure that if you're gonna be using a handmade mask, that you need to be washing it effectively and you also need to be washing your hands as well. So it comes down to hand hygiene, which I stress very much so in my last video because it is super important that when we are touching dirty surfaces, we need to wash our hands thoroughly with soap and water for at least 20 20 to 30 seconds under warm running water. Now looking at the handmade masks, there are very few studies that actually say whether those masks are effective against coronavirus. But there was one interesting study that I wanted to share with you guys. Some very clever scientists and had a look at how well the P2, the N95, the surgical mask and a homemade mask would block an avian influenza virus. Now, this virus they thought was very similar to the coronavirus and they wanted to see just how well these performed in blocking that virus because it could give us an accurate representation of how to block coronavirus. Now, they used the masks and they also used a technique called instant hand washing. Using the masks alone, they found that the P2 and the N95 blocked out 99.8% of the virus, which is pretty good. 
the surgical mask blocked out 97.4% of the virus and the handmade mask blocked out 91.15% of the virus. Now, this is not just any handmade mask. This is a handmade mask which is made up of four Yes, that's right, four kitchen towels plus a cloth over the top. Now I've made my own one over here and they thought this was a, a fairly easy mask that you can make at home. So this is not, we're not talking about your scarf or any veil that goes over your face. We're talking about actually a very thick mask. They said that they use kitchen towels because the kitchen towel itself has a nice woven texture. So any of the viruses will just get stuck in that and they use four of those plus a cloth over the top. So here I've made my own one here using an old sock. And if I put it over my face, it is, it is fairly hard to breathe in, it's, it's quite tricky to breathe in. But they said that the best way of reducing the virus penetrating through all of these methods is to use instant hand hygiene. Because as we know, the virus, we can keep it on our hands and if we're touching our faces, once we've removed the mask, we're gonna end up self-contaminating ourselves, which is not great. So we're gonna end up being uh, infected because of our own hands. So they said the best way to protect yourself from coronavirus or even this avian influenza virus is to don one of these masks at the very minimum, a handmade mask made of four kitchen towels plus a cloth over the top to take it off, um, wash your hands instantly with soap and water. Now what they did mention as well with the handmade mask, of course, like any other handmade masks, you need to replace them regularly. So for example, with this one, you can take off the cloth, you can wash them and kitchen towels you can dispose of in the bin. So it makes you less likely to reuse them and hopefully not cause any self-contamination. Now for those of you out there thinking, well, you know, I could just put a veil over my face, I could just put a scarf over my face, it'll be fine. Interestingly enough, another study that was performed on Saudi Arabian women over in Saudi, where it's obliged for them to wear a veil over their face, actually found that these women who wear veils actually had a higher incidence of respiratory viruses or respiratory illnesses and asthma, indicating that perhaps a single veil by itself may not be enough protection for viruses. So certainly I'd recommend that if you are opting for a homemade mask, I'd go for something a little bit thicker that studies have proven to show that there is some protection, certainly like this four ply kitchen towel mask and a cloth over the top. But please always remember, hand hygiene is your absolute, absolute importance to do that regularly because without that, none of this is worthwhile investing in. But Dr. Nora, it doesn't matter to me because you know what, I've got a stash of N95 and I can just reuse this or I can reuse my P2 mask. I don't need to use any homemade masks. Well, let me just say one thing guys, and this is a question that I've literally been inundated with, these particular masks are designed to be disposable masks. That means they should only be used once. The CDC has given recommendations that these masks can be used for up to eight hours in total. However, if they become soiled, if they become wet, if they become uh, stained on any way, they may no longer become effective. Please make sure that you are not, and I've seen this a lot in clinical practice, please make sure that you are not reusing this day in, day out, day in, day out, thinking that this is gonna give you protection, particularly if it is advertised as being a disposable mask. I have seen patients come into my clinic um, and we're all donning our protective gear, but I've seen patients coming in and their masks look like they could have seen better days. They're literally, they're all tatty, they're falling off their faces, the fit is incorrect. That is not gonna give you any protection. It might give you a little bit of protection, but it's not gonna give you the desirable amount of protection that these masks are supposed to give you. You can have a look at my video in the link in the description below of how to fit a mask properly to make sure that you are effectively being protected from any viruses. The other thing I would like to note is that if you are disposing of these masks, we've seen a surgence of masks being thrown on the floor, disposing correctly, that in itself is a health hazard. Guys, if you are getting rid of your masks after the eight hours of use, good for you, but please please make sure that you're not propagating the virus by leaving it on the floor, someone else picks it up, catches the virus, please throw it away in a bin. So just basic courtesy guys, when you blow into a tissue, throw it into the bin, you don't chuck it on the floor. Similar things with the masks, when you've taken off your mask, throw it in the bin, wash your hands thoroughly, let's end this virus propagation. But what about the disadvantages of wearing a mask? Well, we know for sure that wearing a mask is not as effective as good hand hygiene. That means washing hands thoroughly with soap and running water for 20 to 30 seconds. And it's also more effective to socially distance from people than wearing these masks. 
And in saying all of this, sometimes the masks do offer us a false sense of security. For example, I've seen people walking in the streets with a mask and some of the masks I've seen people wearing are literally transparent. They, you can see through them, you can see their mouth, you can see their nose. And I think it's just people trying to make a quick buck from people and they, they sell these ridiculous looking masks. But these people walk in the streets thinking that, you know, that's their protection, they're, they're absolutely safe from coronavirus. But I have to say, guys, sometimes these masks aren't the most effective um, and really you must be mindful of other things such as social distancing, so two meters, keeping yourself two meters from other people and regular hand hygiene. Those are probably the most two important things you can do to help stop the propagation of the virus. So what if you're just a regular person who's going out in the street, going to buy some groceries and your country doesn't give you an indication as to whether or not you should be wearing a mask? Well, certainly I would say there is no harm wearing a mask provided, and this is really, really important, provided that mask is used effectively. So for example, if you're using a homemade mask, make sure it's cleaned effectively, make sure it's cleaned regularly. And if you're using one of these simple masks, make sure that they actually are worn properly and you're washing your hands regularly. Guys, I cannot stress it enough. And if you're somebody who has got the sniffles and you don't know whether you should be wearing a mask or not, I would suggest if you've got the sniffles, you've got a runny nose, a cough, a cold, and it's not coronavirus, and it's one of the other many viruses we have out at the moment, wearing a simple surgical mask will help you to stop giving your bugs to other people. And as a courtesy, that might be a nice thing, particularly if you're coming to see the doctor and you're sitting in the waiting room and you don't want to spread your bugs. So donning a simple surgical mask or one of these homemade masks will be your best friend. But of course, if you are ill and you don't need to seek medical advice and you simply just need to rest, there is probably no need for you to go out into the world and just stay at home, rest up, have some honey and lemon, and hopefully you'll be feeling better soon. I hope you found this video useful and please let me know if you guys are wearing masks or whether you've been told to wear a mask by your local government, I would love to hear it in the comment section below. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to drop me a line in the comment section below. But for now, take care and stay healthy. We're done. So, so Scully, what's that on your face there? Hmm. I don't think that mask is very effective, do you? Oh, his mask come off as well. See, my models, they, see, you see my models, they actually are just too tired of wearing the mask. He's got proper mask fatigue here. He's like, oh, Dr. Nora, I can't breathe under this Kleenex. Let me free. Isn't that right, mister? Yes. Kleenex is just too much for him. How are you doing, buddy? So that's the problem with masks, is they're, they're very constrictive. You know, you can't breathe very well when you have masks, as shown by my beautiful models, who literally halfway through filming, their masks have fallen off. You see, I would say that's a really poor fit. Um, you know, that's probably not gonna give you any, any protection, my friend, because your mask has just fallen off, you know? The best thing you could do is hand wash, but the problem is, is you don't have hands.